Hi, church family. This is Sunny, and it's great to be able to um, deliver a message of encouragement through suffering with all of you. Um, this is going to be an incarnational preaching message, um, and we, which this means is, if you remember 1 Thessalonians 2.8, it states that, you know, we desire to not only um, share the word of God, but also our lives with each other because you guys are also dear to me. And um, this is why I'm also going to be sharing my life experiences as well as some of the life experiences from people in the Bible as well. So um, today I would like you to also be able to know what the bottom line is. So today's bottom line is suffering for our own sake makes life resentful and unsatisfying, but for Christ, it's joyful and fulfilling. And before we look into uh, Philippians 3, 8 to 9, I want you to, um, to know a little bit more about me. So um, I was an engineering student, and I helped a friend named Mike in graduate school when um, he totaled his car, and um, thankfully he was sober and no one was hurt. And um, well, he couldn't drive anymore, so, um, and I found out about this unfortunate news from him. Uh, so I was the one who um, bought groceries for him, uh, took him to class and to work. And eventually, after two months, um, we also went to purchase a used car for him as well. The miracle came when um, we went to the dealer and he was able to um, purchase a car of low mileage and it was affordable to exactly to the penny of his own budget. Um, eventually, um, the both of us lost touch because he thought that I was gay. Um, and um, I'm sure a lot of us in my own position that um, others have understood uh, misunderstood your intentions to help someone else when, you know, all we wanted to do is to bless the other person and so that the, pers the other person can pay it forward. The miracle that of that happening um, through the help of the car dealer as well as myself um, showed me that um, it was my calling to become a missionary. So after when I graduated from um, engineering school from UC Irvine, uh, I went abroad and um, became a missionary um, uh, as well as an engineer bivocationally for eight years. And I met a lot of wonderful colleagues as well as um, university students um, that I'm still keeping in touch for many years. Um, so. Those are the blessings that I want you to also see in your lives if you have something similar that has happened and that your suffering was able to make an impact in other people's lives. So let's read 2 Corinthians 3, 8 to 9 together. Indeed, we count everything as lost because of the surpassing worth of knowing Christ Jesus, my Lord. For his sake, I have suffered loss of all things and count them as rubbish in order to gain Christ and be found in him, not having righteousness of my own that comes from the law, but that which comes through faith in Christ, the righteousness from God that depends on faith. So I share a little bit about myself already here, and I'm just gonna leave it here for me to explain about, so how, and about um, how um, that verse actually relates to what Paul went through, as well as what I just mentioned in my, my life. So Paul, of course, was a Pharisee, and God, through Christ, changed his um, distorted vision completely through the uh, road to Damascus incident that occurred in his life. Uh, and that allowed him to see that Christ was the only blessing that he really needed in his life because of his faith and how God changed him from being a Pharisee to persecuted Christians, to one of the most renowned um, Christian missionaries of all time. And the first point I'd like to make out of the six points for today's message is, the first one is, enduring opposition brings us joy and hope in the situation by doing the right thing. And the verse that goes with it is, consider him who endured such opposition from sinful men so that you will not grow weary and lose heart. 
I thought there was a time in my life where I was going to be that way. Um, I had a hit and run that was done on me, and uh, the insurance company uh, deactivated my uh, coverage, so then I cannot continue to um, with my acupuncture and um, chiropractic um, treatments for my neck and back injury. And, um, but I didn't lose heart. As you can mention, I've, I've written here is that I didn't lose heart or grow weary because I knew that from God, I needed to just call and see what happened. Um, and um, so the company made the mistake, apologized, and through that process, I was able to, you know, continue to go through with my treatments with the medical team that I'm used to going to. And to me, that's a blessing in disguise, even though I felt as if I was suffering a little bit. So this is the first point um, uh, application question that I would like you guys to consider. So by being value vulnerable and transparent with everyone here today, which I have, can you build a trusting relationship with others by doing the same as a way to pay it forward? Think about that. Second point I'd like to make is that learning obedience by accepting blessings in disguise strengthens faith and character in Christ. And the verse that goes with it is Hebrews 5, 8, which states, he learned obedience by the things which God suffered. When I came back from my three-month sabbatical, I was staying at a place for many years, but the landlord, when I, was le when I left and before I returned, actually sold the property, and I didn't have a place to stay at such short notice besides um, a friend's house where they're ha about to have a baby. Um, it was a time where that I was a bit distressed, but I didn't lose faith. Um, I just followed God's voice, as mentioned over here, and um, I calmly called my landlord to tell him the situation and ask him if he can find another place for me to stay. Um, miraculously, in two days, the place that I now am staying at is even better in a better neighborhood. It's in a safer environment, and it's a lot more comfortable than I used to stay in. And he gave me the entire deposit back. So that, to me, was something that I didn't expect but that was because of God's grace. And the second application question I'd like to think about is this one. Through suffering, your life shows that it has purpose and significance. How has suffering for God strengthened your faith and character? The third point is, commending ourselves in service brings God glory through us by acknowledging his approval above all else. So it's ourselves, glory, and us, okay? So this is the verse that goes with it. 2 Corinthians 6, 3 to 4 states, we put no obstacles in anyone's way so that no fault may be found in our ministry. But as servants of God, we commend ourselves in every way by great endurance, afflictions, hardships, calamities. So in the Bible, Mary and Bethany was mocked for um, using a expensive bottle of uh, spike nard to embalm Christ Jesus. And then she was also opposed by her sister Mary for sitting at Jesus' feet without helping her. And, um, but this was something that um, she felt she needed to do to overcome her fear of man mindset for God. Because her, 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 her focus was on, the, uh, was on the approval of others and not, of other, uh, and not with any other people. So um, that, that being said, as we mentioned, as you can see in John 10, 42, which I actually placed over here, um, the Lord said, told Mary that she chose the prayer portion which will not be taken away from her. And that's something that we also need to do. And it was really difficult for someone like Mary of Bethany to do at the time because um, it was very it's a very patriarchal, male-dominating society. And um, her sister was just, you know, were busy with, you know, the little things, but wasn't, um, but, but was not as focused on what she really needed to do was to focus on God more. And the third application question I'd like to consider is this one. 
Did you know that when we accept Christ as our savior, Father God takes residence in the form of the Holy Spirit, invites us to die of ourselves and become a new creation? Think about that. And the, fourth point, and the fourth point is, caring discipline from God is painful, but the training fosters righteousness and peace. And this is the verse that goes with it. So the words are painful, righteousness, and peace. And in Hebrews 12, 11, no discipline seems pleasant at the time, but painful. Later on, however, it produces a harvest of righteousness and peace, for those who have been trained by it. Well, I was in France for eight years doing my ministry that was called by God. Um, and unfortunate news about my parents losing their jobs as well as contracted cancer. So um, I had to go home and um, hand over my ministry to someone else. Uh, and change my profession because I had to be closer to, um, to my parents to take care of them. So I became a math teacher and taught, at, uh, and taught at the, uh, um, at, in my own hometown. And um, I did that uh, without any regrets. And they've passed away 10 years ago. And um, uh, at the time, um, I thought that, you know, uh, it was not easy for me, um, but um, I wasn't sure if you know God wants me to go back or anything um, until I heard the news from a engineering colleague where um, he suffered from um, the effects of the COVID-19 virus and was in the hospital for two weeks and encouraged um, the, uh, the engineering plant to um, shut down to save the lives of other people and he passed on for doing such a noble deed. And um, that showed me that in the course of 10 years, God was saving my life and wanted me to, me to put compassion in action as well as for me to you know, live in righteousness um, and, and ensured my peace throughout the entire time. And that is something that I'm just grateful and really giving all God praise. So the fourth, the fourth point I'd like to make uh, in terms of the application question is, God disciplines his children, but he never condemns us. Remember in um, Romans 8.1 that um, therefore uh, there, is no, there is no condemnation for those who live in Christ Jesus. And you always have to remember that sometimes because we feel that discipline is a punishment, but it really isn't. But remember that there are times when he carefully fosters our spiritual fruits of righteousness. And according to Galatians um, 5, 22 to 23, there aren't there nine of them, right? And the first one is already mentioned, it's peace, but you also have love and joy, and we also have patience. And then there are also the four nesses, which are kindness, gentleness, goodness, faithfulness, and then self-control. So, um, and all th there's, uh, there's no such law in all, the, uh, in, in all those things, right? And um, have you recalled those other five fruits in your life? I'm sure you have those five fruits, those, those eight fruits, right? <laughs> Sorry, not five. And point five is, bearing one another's burdens is not only Christ's command, it also brings in his presence through comfort and compassion. And this is the two verses that go with it. From Galatians 6, 2, bear one another's burdens and so fulfill the law of Christ. And from 2 Corinthians 1, 3 to 4, praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of compassion and the God of all comfort, who comforts us in all our troubles so that we can comfort those in any trouble with the comfort we ourselves receive from God. So the three words from the three points I want you to fill is, Burdens, compassion, and comfort. When I was um, going um, to my uh, three-month sabbatical in France, my uncle's uh, mother-in-law was suffering from Alzheimer's and arthritic knees, so she was in a lot of pain and she wasn't mo and she was immobile. Uh, my uncle had to work, um, so and it was 
then the lockdown occurred in Paris. So what happened was that since I was a foreign student there, um, I, um, um, I helped with the shopping, the cooking, and the cleaning for her, and was able to spend time um, getting to know my uncle's brother-in-law. I call her Auntie Kim now, and um, she was she had a pretty um, sad life, uh, very similar to my mom's, where that um, she had to raise uh, three children on her own. I have two sisters and me and that um, her ex-husband was an alcoholic and had many affairs. So, um, and he never paid child support, which was the same as my dad. Um, so I was able to relate to her suffering. And I realized that by her telling me this story, I was there for a purpose. And it was to relinquish her suffering by giving her um, the compassion and action by taking care of her, as well as, you know, giving her the comforting words that I know, so then she no longer has to hold so much suffering in her in herself because, you know, it's something that can be given to God. We built a really good relationship, and at the end of her life, um, she wanted me to be her godson, and I told her, well, um, I, I, I want to, but I have to have my family to you know, be, um, be uh, a family of God. So um, she became a Christian. She um, and she believed in Christ as her as her Lord and Savior at the end of her life. And I became her godson ever since. So the fifth application question is: Do you use your painful experiences to bring compassion in action and comforting words to encourage others as God does for you? I'm sure he always comforts us and encourages us, and I'm sure that you all have done that for your loved ones and friends. In point six, it states, imparting his blessings and favor, suffering for God guides the path to completing our life purpose. And the verse that follows it is 1 Peter 5.10, which states, after you have suffered for a while, the God of all grace who imparts his blessing and favor who called you to his own eternal glory in Christ, will himself complete, confirm, strengthen, and establish you. So remember, it's going to be uh, blessings and then favor, right? And then also life purpose. So those are the three that you want to fill in. So this is the most difficult thing for me to share with you today, to, to um, satisfy incarnational preaching. Two years ago, uh, during Thanksgiving week, I was diagnosed with an inoperable brain tumor. Uh, I didn't know how long I had to live, and it was a malignant tumor as well. Uh, my uncle um, found a, uh, a, a um, experimental, non-approved by anybody um, treatment to help with um, you know, my uh, health crisis. And um, he, uh, but I, I wasn't sure what to do. I told my church, and the pastor didn't believe me. And um, a, year, a month later, um, uh, he asked me to forgive him because um, he just was concerned about my being a liability to the church. And I did. Um, uh, since there weren't uh, any uh, online small groups, I went uh, to um, another church, my current church right now, uh, went through the four uh, membership classes, and I've been a member there for a year and served at my own online small group there. Uh, during that time, I asked for prayer, um, and um, my, uh, malignant my malignant tumor miraculously became benign, so I was able to take up the, um, the uh, non-approved treatment in France for three months, which is the re reason why I took my sabbatical from work. And um, I have uh, had my uh, tumor shrink, and I'm a lot better now. And that's, you know grace from God, which is definitely blessing and favor. Um, and uh, from that, um, you could tell that I was really concerned because I could lose my job and um, for, you know, not being able to do, not, not for just going through that process of, you know, going overseas and, you know, being, uh, you know, being a student um, 
by student reasons and going there because um, I went through a Le Cordon Bleu culinary program for three months so then I could actually stay there during the pandemic. Um, so in, in all that, I got that certificate, I got my, um, uh, my tumor shrunk, and I also saved someone um, uh, was very dear to me, my own godmother, to become um, a, a Christian in the family of God. So those are the three blessings that I could not ask for anything when I was at my, at my weakest point in my life. So he definitely, as it says here, God heals me from the inside out and still guides my path to this day so that I continue to complete my life purpose as he wills. So the sixth application question is this one. Do you realize that God is all we need to be the best version of ourselves inside and out? Do you notice he guides our path towards our life purpose? And I want you to also cast, I want to cast this vision on you guys. So imagine when we are vulnerable and transparent about our suffering and being our true selves to comfort others like Apostle Paul and the Word of God. And remember that the Bible has always been an open book to live by about people turning to God for understanding, endurance, and deliverance. And God is trustworthy, bringing good out of calamity and adversity. So become a blessing to others. Life is not always comfortable, but suffering does make us better, make us better people. And in closing, I want to ask this question of, uh, of, uh, of, um, um, in you. So what does dying of ourselves mean to you as the Heavenly Father lives in you? Would you like to take the step of commitment today? Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you <clears throat> for encouraging us through suffering with your word today. As we recommend ourselves in you, let us remember your unconditional love and sacrifice to save us from sin and death through your Son, Jesus Christ. Please continue to keep us safe, secure, and complete this week, despite the struggles, whether great or small, that we face in our lives daily. We thank you for always being present with us as our trustworthy sovereign over all things. For the fear of man is a snare. Let us always focus on your approval of us above all else. May we boast about you like Paul did in today's passage, commend ourselves for suffering for your sake. As we know the bottom line, that suffering our own sake makes life resentful and unsatisfying, but for Christ, it's joyful and fulfilling. The Bible has always been an open book filled with your precious word, so please fill us with joy and peace to commit ourselves the first time or again. Allow the choice to freely accept you as our only Savior, God, and your word as the absolute truth in our lives. Thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. So to wrap up this, I want to um, share one of my favorite songs in acapella called Slow Down by Chuck Gerard. Um, I believe that because of this difficult time uh, in any season of our lives, either during this pandemic or, um, you know, uh, in any situation, it's a season. But it's time for us to slow down and know that God is sovereign over all things. So I'm going to sing this to you right now. In the midst of my confusion, in a time of desperate need, when I'm thinking not too clearly, <clears throat> a gentle voice does intercede. Slow down, slow down, be still, my child, be still and wait on the Spirit of the Lord. Slow down and hear His voice and know that He is God. In the
the time of tribulation, when I'm feeling so unsure, when things are pressing in about me, a gentle voice, so still, so pure. Slow down, slow down, be still, my child. Be still and wait on the Spirit of the Lord.